in a very tight manner can you reduce the cardiovascular complications unfortunately the answer is no but you can reduce the renal complications because you are going to reduce the albuminuria so it is such a peculiar disease it produces complications due to hyperglycemia but tight hyperglycemic control does not reduce the complication cardiovascular but uh, to a reasonable extent to some moderate extent it can reduce the renal complications why is that so and how is it sglt2 inhibitors are used initially sglt2 was uh, were uh, advised not only for uh, diabetes disease a recurrent cardiovascular uh, uh, heart failure in diabetic people and also in uh, uh, chronic uh, ckd diseases stage 1 to 3 once uh, uh, it proceeds to stage 4 and 5 ckd there is a decrease in glycosuria once there is a decrease in glycosuria original thought was this that this drug is not going to be useful because it is going to handle the increased glucose that is excreted in the proximal and distal convoluted tubule so they thought originally in uh, stage 3 and uh, stage 4 and 5 ckd this is not a useful drug but lot of research work has thrown light that this can still be used and it has become a wonder drug not only for cardiologists dealing with cardiac failure and diabetes cardiac failure without diabetes and also for nephrologists with the management of diabetes and ckd who knows it may be a drug for the future in patients with cardiac failure and renal failure without diabetes to explain to us how we understand this molecule over the years we have uh, dr vinod kumar professor vinod kumar who is going to tell us take us through the journey so we wouldn't uh, feel the depth of the absence of uh, uh, the invited faculty we have our own faculty who can uh, uh, take us through this uh, vinod kumar please thank you so much sir uh, thank you for your kind words as uh, uh, sir said uh, sglt2 inhibitors uh, we have been with this molecule from 2010 uh, with the trials being conducted uh, for kappa glucosolin in india also so now we have have a great idea about um, sglt2 molecules over this 10 years initially there were even lot of inhibition uh, was there to use among the ckd patients now uh, the indications have become very strong as sir said we have been using for ckd patients cardiac failure patients once being a diabetic drug now it has been moved to as a cardiac molecule even without diabetes now we are started prescribing for lv dysfunction patients so it's a wonderful molecule it has gone through a lot of changes over this last 10 years lot of understanding has come lot of mechanism of actions theories have come in so with all this uh, depth of knowledge on this particular molecule i thought uh, we will uh, see few uh, insights into this uh, particular topic Uh, before going to the exact topic about the epidemiology of diabetes we know that the people with uh, uh, die because of heart disease three times more with the patient is a diabetic patient rather than a you know, non diabetic patient always diabetes and heart disease goes hand in hand we see commonly uh, diabetic patients of uh, dying because of heart disease rather than any other major complications um uh, uh, and the diabetic patients develop uh, heart disease at an younger age if you see coronary artery disease pattern even in india if you see most of the lot of patients become diabetic at an younger age and we see uh, coronary artery disease 10 years before in the western population so we see between 45 to 55 years itself in india lot of patients who are coming in with coronary artery disease so their life beyond cad is also a great thing. so we have lot of subset of population who are diabetic with heart disease to be treated so we need a molecule which can have a conjunctural effect on both diabetes as well as heart disease and um, as i said earlier the middle aged population is the major population which is being affected with diabetes being affected with cardiovascular disease uh, up to 41% had a history of uh, uh, cardiovascular disease which includes stroke coronary artery disease or peripheral uh, vascular disease and up to 10% had a history of uh, stroke up to 14% had a history of a heart attack so the mean age of the study population is between 50 to 69 years even before the attainment of uh, retirement lot of people nowadays come with heart disease who are uh, having a pre existing diabetes 
and up to 27 per thousand died or because of a cardiovascular disease each year near 2012 claims so the even the age this population was studied was between 49 to 69 years which is the most productive effective age group of uh, the middle age group of population subset so and uh, out of 1000 death seven were due to coronary artery disease out of 1000 death nine were due to because of stroke so middle age population diabetes living in a high and middle income countries uh, face this wrath very much so controlling diabetes and cardiovascular disease becomes a prior importance of each patient who are treating a diabetic patient so and we also know the cardiovascular risk increases with diabetes both in men and women uh, predictors of cv events like um, established complications of diabetes or retinopathy nephropathy cardiovascular dystonia renal dysfunction hypertension hyperglycemia and smoking if you see all this complication the main two things which comes into our mind one is cardiovascular dysfunction the other one is uh, uh, chronic kidney disease these are the two major uh, risk factors which are uh, faced by every diabetic patients uh, basically if you see uh, even prior to uh, becoming a diabetic patient the metabolic syndrome catches him Uh, uh, the indian subcluster of population if you see they have a abdominal obesity uh, with uh, insulin resistant dyslipidemia a uh, inflammation and increased blood pressure which all put together has an increased risk for coronary artery disease so increased prevalence of coronary artery disease among uh, 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 among uh, diabetic patients and bp category when compared we found whenever the in even in uk pds there is a clear cut correlation between the effect of bp as well as micro and macular complication among the diabetic patients whenever the bp becomes uncontrolled the chance of the patients to have a higher uh, chance of to have a micro and macular complication which are clearly depicted even in uk pds so uh, if you see one thing uh, the risk factors shared by heart disease and diabetes are similar one is high blood pressure then is unhealthy weight then high cholesterol these are the uh, three risk factors which are shared both by diabetes and heart disease patient and even especially in indian subset we see all these risk factors among these patients uh, as uh, uh, sivagadachum sir chairman was talking about uh, we all know that there is one when you go for a decrease in 1% of hpa1c uh, translates into uh, reduction of um, uh, uh, lower extremity amputation reduction microvascular complications heart failure myocardial infarction stroke these all we know from our uh, uh, ukpds trial but we also know as sir said there are major trials like acard advance vadt which are all published in nejm in 2008 clearly show intense decrease of hva1c did not give us a advantage in terms of cardiovascular mortality reduction or morbidity reduction so these three trials clearly said that uh, though you go for a stricter control of glucose you may not achieve effective cardiac benefit among the patients only by reducing hva1c so we need molecules which not only reduce hva1c but they are also should be cardiovascularly protect so after 2008 uh, um, us fda came out with a, a proposal that any molecule which hit the market should have been a cardiovascularly safe molecule and we started looking after a lot of molecules in the market so 2008 is the watershed line before that any molecule can hit a mole- adaptic molecule can hit the market without cardiovascular safety profile being studied but after 2008 in this last 10 years all the monover molecules which hit the market was analyzed for cardiovascular safety cv safety and renal safety this has become a practice now the population which is being involved for this study the high cardiovascular risk patients renal risk patients where the effect of the diabetic drug is not only studied among the new patients but also a established heart disease and renal patients now we clearly know which molecule is suits for which particular subset of patients so with lot of guidelines available around us lot of newer guidelines available to us with esc aace ada easd so what is new among all these gui- guidelines now we all know after 2019 there are lot of reclassification of cv risk for diabetes new to a treatment algorithms for glucose lowering agents for management and prevention of 
cardiovascular disease has come. There are this uh, newer uh, recommendations. What is the major change? The recommendations are, as we all know, with the um, uh, dearth of knowledge is available to us with multiple trials being happening, uh, CVOT trials for various drugs like DPP4 inhibitors, SGLT2 inhibitors, and um, newer insulins. We have got a lot of re-modifications of these guidelines. Slowly, which uh, uh, SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 analogs started as class se second line of agents or third line of agents after uh, metformin, after uh, uh, glimipride, sulfonylureas, after uh, DPP-4 inhibitors, where they found place for GLP and SGLT2 inhibitors. They have slowly, gradually, with the data available in the uh, field, they have grown the ladder. And now they have moved to a place where even before metformin, SGLT2 inhibitors can be considered in two scenarios. That is one scenario where the patient is intolerant to metformin. In the other scenario, where the ASCVD risk is more than 10. When a high risk ASCVD patient comes, you diagnose them to be newly diagnosed. Even before introducing metformin, you can introduce SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 analogs. These two molecules have gained the confidence of prescribing doctors in form of cardiovascular safety and renal safety. Similarly, those patients, if the patients uh, have a CKD stage 1 or 2 or 3, we can comfortably prescribe in these uh, um, SGLT2 inhibitors as the first line of therapy among these patients. Similarly, heart failure patients also SGLT2 inhibitors are now moved to as a class 1 indication for therapy among the diabetic patients with a lot of data being applied and available currently with us in this last two years. Also extensively, they have studied this molecule for heart failure and they have found it is very, very beneficial. So we have a very good idea about this molecule and being a third class agent to be added to diabetes, now this drug has moved and it is now fighting with metformin to become a class one indication for a new uh, patient therapy initiation. So uh, that, that's what I would say about SGLT2 inhibitors, that we can be reflected not only with uh, 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 European guidelines, but also with the American guidelines. Now we all know SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 analogs are moved up the ladder. What is the problem with GLP-1 analogs? They are injectables. Now, even now we don't have a oral uh, GLP-1 analogs available in India. But currently, uh, the trials are successfully going on for a GLP-1 analog orally uh, active molecules, but yet to receive us in, in our Indian market. Uh, then, moving on to how this has happened. Now, we all see that guidelines are showcasing this uh, 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 shift in the therapy among the diabetic patients with SGLT2 inhibitors. How this shifting of paradigm in diabetes care happened over a period of time with uh, this newer molecules into the market. As I said earlier, from 2013 to 2022, after 2008, a lot of trials for DPP-4 inhibitors and SGLT2 inhibitors, GLP-1 analogs and newer insulins are happening. And we found a lot of data of which we find uh, SGLT2 inhibitors are one molecule which are, can be safely prescribed not only among cardiovascular high risk patients, but along renal comprom renally compromised patients also. There are a lot of trials which have shown that they are both safe and effective and they have a great impact on mortality and morbidity. So as I said earlier, SGLT2 inhibitors reduces maize and as well as mortality and uh, GLP-1 analogs, the only problem is they are injectables. DPP-4 analogs are uh, 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 very good molecules. They are like amlodipine of uh, uh, hypertension. We can prescribe to any patient uh, in that case. But the only problem is cardiovascular safety or benefit among the patients is not much studied with a DPP-4 inhibitors. Trials are not showing superiority over placebos. That is the only issue with DPP-4 inhibitors. And the two molecules of major molecules of DPP-4 inhibitors are shown increase in heart failure risk. That is the only problem with DPP-4 inhibitors. So when you uh, compare these molecules, current newer molecules currently available uh, uh, in the market, we know that GLP-1 analogs and SGLT-2 uh, inhibitors have a strong data for support of uh, uh, cardiovascular safety. 
even pioglitazone later styled have supports cardiovascular safety metformin ukpds that is a steady but the problem with metformin is that a trial enrolled only 300 odd patients to be studied during that trial for metformin that is the only issue otherwise these molecules are a strong indications for cardiovascular risk reduction so moving on to stlt2 inhibitors as per se they provide you arterial protection they provide you glucose lowering action they provide you cardiovascular protection both by metabolic effect and immunodynamic effect as i said initially beginning of the talk that there is no exact mechanism uh, by which sglt2 inhibitors give this cardiovascular protection but there are multiple postulations like pre cardiac uh, pre cardiac output reduction for uh, uh, superficial hypothesis lot of uh, activities are uh, cardiac neutrality uh, theory so, so many theories have been uh, uh, postulated among uh, different researchers to show among the cardiac protection but we don't have a systematic uh, mechanism of action still now how we are able to achieve the cardiovascular potential so as uh, our chap person said to, during the uh, introduction uh, it is a insulin independent mechanism glucose lowering with a low risk for hypoglycemia it causes asthmatic diuresis so it can cause a weight loss and loss of excess glucose in urine leading to a sustained weight loss so weight loss is also one of the important paradigm effect of uh, sglt2 inhibitors one more thing what we notice with sglt2 inhibitors is a, a blood pressure reduction both in systolic as well as diastolic bp control and this molecule is free of hypoglycemic risk that is one of the advantage with this molecule so as sir said it is not only reduces hva1c but it is also reduces weight and also the blood pressure among the patients so uh, there is a consistent reduction in hva1c across the various ranges of prescribed treatment as i said it not only uh, showcases itself in monotherapy but also if you see the uh, studies we know that when added to metformin when added to sulfonylureas it is uh, uh, sulfonylureas like glimepiride or glicoside which is the common drug which is being used in diabetic patients in india and even with dpp4 inhibitors uh, and uh, other oids like insulin also in spite in when added to insulin also they show a consistent reduction in hpa ones which is the advantage of having uh, sglt2 inhibitors added to your molecule at any level of therapy when you are treating a patient so it shows a synergistic action not only as a monotherapy molecule but also when it has a synergistic action with metformin sulfonylureas and dpp4 inhibitors when you are adding to insulin you have to be careful on reducing the dose of insulin similarly uh, when you take dapagliflozolin which is one among the drug of uh, sglt2 inhibitors i will take this molecule see mostly dapa uh, empa and the canagliflozolin which are all three molecules which are us fda approved molecule currently available in india and other other uh, two uh, uh, other molecule which is remoglifosolin which is a korean molecule which lacks depth of data but it is currently available in indian market uh, um, so we i am going to take we compared among the three molecules like dapa empa cana all these three though different done upon uh, different subset of populations but uh, almost the results are similar to each other in both efficacy and safety so today we will consider one molecule like dapagliflozolin for uh, our lecture purpose so that we can easily go ahead and see what are the trials available in this particular molecule so as i said earlier when a dapagliflozolin given as a monotherapy or added with metformin or sulfonylurea or dpp4 inhibitor or insulin they show a significant uh, additional benefit not only in terms of uh, hva1c reduction but also weight reduction so as i said but not only weight reduction if you see this graph we can see appreciate there is a significant uh, uh, blood pressure reduction both in terms of systolic as well as diastolic uh, uh, blood pressure reduction as i said now uh, moving on to the cardiovascular efficacy we all know primary prevention uh, with dapa trial currently available to us we know it is neutral drug on mace reduction all glp1 analogs and dpp4 inhibitors are also have a neutral effect when with dap is a multiple risk factors heart failure reduction sglt2 inhibitors are uh, way apart when compared to glp1 analogs and dpp4 inhibitors similarly diabetic kidney disease 
SCLT inhibitors score sure GLP-1 analogs. And this is in case of primary prevention. But if you are coming to talk about secondary prevention, so that is established cardiovascular disease. It has a significant reduction in maize, heart failure, as well as diabetic kidney disease. But only maize reduction is seen with uh, GLP-1 analogs. Uh, uh, DPP-4 inhibitors are broadly, they are neutral. They don't have a great impact on cardiovascular mortality beneficially, but they are cardiovascularly neutral drugs. But if you take uh, G uh, GSTLT2 inhibitors in primary prevention, they are neutral in maize events, but they have a significant role in heart failure and DKD. But in secondary prevention, they have a significant role, not only heart failure and diabetic kidney disease, but also in maize reduction. Uh, so uh, uh, if you see, I will uh, talk to this slide like this. The uh, declared trial, Dapaglofazolin came with primary uh, uh, prevention uh, patients. Whereas CANVAS and IMPA showed they are very effective in secondary prevention patients. And uh, 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 a declared TIMI trial, uh, this is one of the trials where this gives a clear edge over other trials because mainly these patients were uh, uh, at risk for cardiovascular events. They are primary prevention patients, 60% uh, of the patients. And uh, they are studied among, uh, compared with that of placebo. They found that it is non-inferior to placebo in terms of uh, CV risk reduction. But uh, glyphosolins have an edge over uh, other molecules in terms of heart failure diabetes management. So SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 analogs, uh, when DAPA glyphosolin is, uh, uh, compared with, is, uh, is compared with placebo in terms of heart failure reduction, we all know, not only DAPA, DAPA, EMPA, can also showed significant heart failure reduction up to a relative risk reduction of up to 27% and absolute risk reduction of about 0.8%. And um, not only uh, 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 among uh, the primary prevention subset, but also among the secondary prevention subset where the patients had an established cardiovascular disease, there is a significant reduction in heart failure admission. The absolute risk reduction going from 0.7 in the primary prevention to 1.2% in the secondary prevention, which is a very good value. That means when you are giving a heart failure patient, with an established heart failure patient uh, you are, who has a diabetes, you have a uh, a SGLT2 molecule in this prescription, you are going to reduce this heart failure admissions in future for sure. So this was this led to a great idea after declared that all these molecules are found they have a significant heart failure reducing property. So these EMPA, DAPA uh, went ahead with uh, special trials uh, which concentrated especially on heart failure. So uh, DAPA went ahead with DAPA HF trial, uh, EMPA went ahead with EMPA EF trial. So, SGLT2 inhibitors with the primary trials are showing a very good promise among heart failure patients. These uh, drugs went ahead with uh, heart failure trials, especially. And uh, the beauty of these uh, trials were that they not only uh, enrolled uh, patients with LV dysfunction with diabetes, but 50% of the population who are enrolled for these studies were also non diabetic That is the significance of this trial. So uh, the both diabetic and non diabetic subsets were based, uh, were matched similarly. And uh, except for the diabetes, all other factors were matched among these patients. And if you could see, we, they went up to a GFR of 40, 30. So even below EGFR less than 60 were also considered. We all know uh, with uh, canaglyphosolin hitting the market with EGFR of 30% patients being enrolled, we uh, get which gave a, a clear cut credence trial, which gave a clear cut uh, uh, importance and uh, faith among the practitioners to use SDLT2 inhibitors among the patients with uh, renal failure component also. Uh, similarly, this uh, DAPA HF trial, uh, one more additional thing which I want to bring to everybody's notice is that. These patients were adequately treated for heart failure. These are not an untreated patients. If you see, they are on a good dose of AC, ARB, or a valsartan circuitry combination, or a beta blocker, MRAs, ICD, CRT. If you see this, even they have gone up to the level of device therapy. In spite of patients being on a very good optimal medical therapy, there is a significant uh, reduction in cardiovascular death, heart failure hospitalization, and our urgent hospital um, visit, which is a 
primary endpoint and there is a significant uh, benefit is noted both among diabetes and non diabetic patients in terms of cardiovascular death and worsening heart failure events and uh, secondary outcomes if you say cv death or heart failure as hospitalization among diabetes as well as among non diabetes we find a significant betterment with dapagliflozin when compared to that of a placebo and uh, and with respect to heart failure hospitalization we clearly dapa scored over uh, the placebo in both among uh, diabetic subset as well as among the non diabetic subset uh, all cause death it was uh, uh, almost uh, slightly better with uh, dapa in both the groups in diabetic group as well as in the non diabetic group and if you see the safety of this molecule both in diabetic and non diabetic group there was no major adverse side effects was noted even uh, volume depletion though it was surprising though it was surprising we expect to be a greater volume depletion among the patients but as the trial showed there is no significant volume depletion among both the groups renal safety was absolutely normal between the placebo and the standard uh, line of therapy as well as when compared with dapagliflozin even amputations were similar uh, so uh, diabetic ketoacidosis was not significant mm, uh, ae leading to treatment discontinuation was almost similar or even less in dapa when compared to that of placebo so uh, dapa hf clearly said gave us a new hope that this diabetic molecule need not be alone used for patients with diabetes but in heart failure they can be used with or without diabetes with a reduced ejection fraction they have a relative and absolute risk reduction in death and hospitalization is substantial clinically important and consistent in patients with and without type 2 diabetes dapagliflozin was well tolerated and the rate of treatment discontinuation was low among the patients both with and without diabetes so sglt2 inhibitors is a new approach both uh, dapa and impa uh, the ampa came with impa uh, heart failure trial uh, so dapa and impa have shown a clear cut uh, benefit in heart failure a reduced ejection fraction patients among patients who have both diabetes and non diabetes so a molecule which started its journey as a diabetic molecule now it has become a, almost a molecule of a cardiologist cardiology molecule so that is a greater transition as said by our uh, uh, chairperson moderator uh, dr sivakar chum sir this has evolved by itself now into a cardiology molecule and uh, uh, not only this is uh, by the trials ESC guidelines uh, gave an update on SGL2 inhibitors to be utilized for heart failure standard therapy both in diabetic and non diabetic subsets when there is a reduced ejection fraction and uh, need for a joint approach as sir sir said there is no more uh, thing called diabetologist no more thing called cardiologist now there is a few new field which is evolving which is called diabeto cardiologist uh, and which takes away uh, part of uh, renal component also so i will say diabeto reno cardiologist because uh, these three factors play an important role as we uh, nowadays lot of procedures are being done on cardiology based substance for coronary artery disease lot of patients left up with diabetic nephropathy so it is in dread it is very important for a cardiologist to select a diabetic molecule or a diabetologist to select a cardiology molecule which is suitable not only for that particular subset but also it is suitable for kidney as well as heart so we all know Uh, specific effects of uh, common effects of uh, 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 SGLT2 inhibitors that is uh, plasma glucose reduction, body weight reduction as I said by our chat person, reduction in BP, reduction in uric acid, there is a reduction in visceral fat, but also it helps in osmotic diuresis, natural uresis, decrease in intra uh, glomerular pressure, interstitial edema reduction, uh, erythropoiesis, ketogenesis, albuminuria reduction, sustained EGFR. these are all cardio renal benefits of sglt2 inhibitors though, though these are all postulated benefits but everything is moving towards these uh, postulated benefit mechanisms of actions and uh, uh, for kidney disease dapa ckd this is a one more trial as we said earlier now we saw declar trial which is a primary prevention trial mainly 60% of the population were primary preventive population we now know then we saw how it is important was a sglt2 molecule in the role of heart failure reduction now we are moving to a other part of our today's uh, talk that is dapagliflozin in uh, patients with chronic kidney disease dapa ckd about 4000 uh, odd population with ckd that is egfr between 25 to 75 that is very very important we are enrolling patients above 30 egfr with and without diabetes 
and the patients were studied compared with the matching placebo uh, and uh, they were uh, uh, followed up uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for about a uh, year and a half and the results showed primary outcome you should uh, clearly notice this published in NEGM then 2020 sustained greater than 50% EGFR decline end stage uh, kidney disease and renal or cardiovascular disease the relative risk reduction of 39% all cause mortality reduction relative risk reduction is 31% uh, so uh, um, and the patient with CKD with and without type 2 diabetes dopagliposolin reduce the risk of kidney failure reduce the risk of CV death or heart failure hospitalization, prolong the survival, delay the initiation of dialysis and reduce the number of deaths. DAPA CKD trial has shown DAPA glucosamine potential as a long awaited new treatment option for patients with CKD. Uh, uh, so, uh, so it is not only beneficial among the patients with uh, uh, heart failure or uh, established uh, heart disease patients, but also it is very safe to be given among the CKD patients. Now with the two trials, DAPA HF showing a way forward for even among non-diabetic patients, we can use uh, this as a heart failure drug molecule. And similarly, DAPA CKD showing that even among non-diabetic patients with uh, CKD patients, EGFR up to 30%, we can initiate SGLT2 inhibitors as a treatment option. Now, these are all giving us a new frontiers of opportunity to treat these patients. So, uh, we, I can conclude saying this, SGLT2 inhibitors is a novel insulin independent mechanism of oxygen molecule drug. So, uh, chance of hypoglycemia is less. Reduced SbA1c without increasing the risk of hypoglycemia. As I, our chairperson correctly pointed out the initiation of the, uh, this talk that it is associated with weight loss, associated with reduction of BP, suitable for combination with all, all other anti-hyperglycemic medications and moving from the third line of treatment to first line of treatment in a selected individual. This is the growth of HLD2 inhibitors over this entire decade. And it is suitable for use across the continuum of type 2 DM from early to late disease, independent of the stage of the disease or nature of the disease. And uh, uh, effectiveness dependent upon adequate uh, renal function. And uh, we have seen that it is safe not only among established heart disease patients, it is safe among cardiovascular risk patients, heart failure patients, and renally compromised patients. Now, we can comfortably use this molecule, and still this molecule is evolving. Every year, one more trial is coming up. Newer molecules are being added to uh, this SGL2 molecules. Now, we have seen vertiglifosoline hitting the market. Uh, trials results are out. But we could not appreciate a similar kind of cardiovascular benefit among that molecule when compared to the, all the three other US FDA approved molecules. So uh, still I would say SGLT2, whether it is a class effect or a molecular effect, whether uh, this is going to become a, a cardiac molecule or going to sustain as a diabetic molecule, I'm not sure. But I, one thing is for sure, uh, even this molecule is not going to end now, it is going to uh, rule the next decade also. As years pass on, I think and I believe that a lot of understanding about this new molecule is going to happen and we are going to keep on learning about this molecule. Uh, with this, I will uh, conclude this uh, uh, talk and uh, open the forum for discussion. Thank you, Sivagad Chamsar, for this opportunity. Thank you, Vinad. That was a wonderful uh, presentation. You had covered both cardiovascular and uh, the renal effects of SGLT2 inhibitors and how they can be used both in diabetic and non-diabetic uh, patients in uh, reducing the cardiovascular maze and mortality and heart failure as hospitalization and also for uh, arrest or uh, regression to progression of coronary artery disease. Uh, uh, sorry, CKD. And uh, so I would like uh, the forum, if they have any doubts, they can... Uh, uh, put it forward so that uh, it is for better learning of all of us. Sir, uh, uh, if, if you permit, I will ask, sir, actually. Oh, sure. Uh, sir, uh, what, 
what do you feel sir among the three molecules us fda approved molecules currently available do you feel any specific difference do you choose uh, among them or you feel all these molecules are similar sir uh, when i started practicing you asked me a practical question i will answer it practically because empareg was the first one to come out i started using empaglifosin and then we had apprehension using using the cana and the dapagliflozin because of fracture and amputation now the later trials are very clearly shown that if the person does not have evidence of peripheral arterial disease pad you are free to use these two molecules also similarly the fracture risk is not specifically increased with the use of aglt2 inhibitors so uh, we can use any molecule depending on uh, once a day usage it is still uh, easier for patient compliance and uh, now that uh, the uh, government has removed uh, the i think lot of companies have started coming out with these uh, molecules and uh, i hope uh, in the cardiologists uh, armamentarium of uh, treatment of cardiac failure after arni i think we are going to add this one also aglt2 also as another drug of choice now uh, there should be some uh, post graduates who should be attending this uh, for their benefit uh there are no sglt2 inhibitors on the heart then how does it uh, improve the heart function have you ever questioned yourselves any of the post graduates it is just a open discussion you don't have sglt inhibitor inhibitors in the on the heart but heart benefits profound uh, profoundly oh, finally yes ma finally yes. rahul antony falgun So you would still tell them that. Oh, uh, the there are a lot of findings as uh, we know beautifully put it. In the next ten years, we are going to learn more and more about this molecule. One of the SGLT two inhibitors, I forget the name. I think it is ethylglyphosin or something, is uh, has uh, shown to produce uh, improvement in NAFLA, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, how does this happen? How does weight reduction happen? this reduces the sites of adipocytes in the body not only in the subcutaneous tissue but also in the liver and in the heart now how is it reduction of uh, 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 epicardial fat improves the cardiac function there is no direct uh, uh, reasoning about how it improves but one of the theories is when you reduce the adipocytes the inflammatory markers are reduced and the naflad they had found inflammatory markers and naflad markers all the uh, liver enzymes being reduced so these are probably effects by which uh, the heart size the liver size the total body weight everything comes down and uh, this is a very important mechanism and uh, the second mechanism as uh, our uh, 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 this one uh, uh, narrator dr vinod kumar was telling it definitely reduces in many of the trials the systolic bp by 2 to 3.5 mm of mercury and diastolic by about 1.8 mm of mercury this is like uh, the first hope trial which reduced 4 and 2 mm only so that itself produces uh, a reduction now what is the reduction in bp due to reduction in plasma volume yes we can achieve it by using a diuretic why not we use a diuretic the effect of diuretic in reducing the plasma volume last for two week, uh, two months eight weeks and then it comes back to the original plasma volume whereas when you use an sglt2 inhibitor it becomes a permanent reduction in plasma volume this is one of the reasons and the improvement of kidney function has been variedly thought about and one of the best methods they say is due to the tubulo glomerular feedback see whenever there is an hypotension and hyponatremia what happens is the juxta glomerular apparatus gets a feedback and then sends the signal and produce a afferent arteriolar constriction whereas when lot of glucose goes there is afferent arteriolar dilatation and therefore the intra glomerular pressure decreases and albuminuria comes down what has been proved beyond doubt with the arb and as we inhibitors is if you reduce albuminuria the renal damage comes down and sglt do even though it has multiple actions sodium hydrogen ion exchanger one of the recent concepts is this uh, tubulo glomerular feedback which is very very essential to improve the 
renal function. So all these things, reduction in hepatocyte, sodium hydrogen ion, ion exchanger, plasma volume reduction, and therefore reduction in the BP, arterial stiffness is reduced, systolic and diastolic BP are reduced, adipocyte size, skin fat, visceral fat, liver fat, epicardial fat. Epicardial fat, liver fat, and visceral fat reduction, even in the absence of obesity. That's the most important thing. So all these things cause a generalized improvement in the cardiac failure because inflammatory markers come down. And therefore, the cardiac failure also comes down. And uh, the renal function improves. These are the theories that are being put forward and coming one by one in recent papers about the mode of action. Initially, everybody thought it is only osmotic diuresis and uh, glucose going out, glycosuria, which is causing. Now, all these things are uh, getting uh, uh, established and published. As he said, what was conceptual is now getting proven. So it's going to be a real wonderful drug in the prevention of complications. Start them early. Because diabetologists always used to say there is a, a memory theory. So if you start treating them and controlling them early, you can definitely reduce the incidence of uh, cardiac and renal complications. Sure, sir. Yes, we know. Yeah, it was its theory super, sir. That is. Uh... It has come out in uh, again your uh, NEGM 2020. Yeah, yes, sir. That's a very and good point, sir. We have been, never been. As usual, I will send you the reference. You can give it to your postgraduates. It's a beautiful sure, article about the mode of action in chronic kidney disease. Oh, sure, sir. Sure, sir. There is any other question, Ma? Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Murali. Murali, sir. Yes, sir. Morally, we can... Nice presentation, nice discussion, sir. Uh, one question to both of you. Is that going to be in future in uh, other cardiac... Am I audible? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, for uh, we know the NSK, sir. Yes, sir. And the other four monk members. Where do you think this drug is going to be in other cardiac problems? Heart failure we are looking for. Things yeah. like myocarditis. Yeah. Because it's uh, super fuel theory, other things. Are they going to have a role, do you think, sir? Uh, I think so, sir, because uh, physiologically, as I have told you, they say it is an anti-inflammatory drug. And uh, their uh, main uh, uh, postulation, why it uh, reduces maize is due to the anti-inflammatory action because of reduction in adipocytes. So I think, as you rightly said, it is going to have a role as an anti-inflammatory in myocarditis also. Sir, they are doing multiple small, small trials everywhere with 100 patients, 200 patients on multiple aspects of um, uh, cardiologic. Uh, but there are only a few publications available with myocarditis and all here and there. But we know there is no major trial. But um, they are moving, they are trying to prove that in uh, preserved ejection fraction. That is what uh, the uh, next move of these three major molecules. So probably we will get uh, data on the preserved ejection fraction in 2022. But about uh, myocarditis and other, uh, it's a very good idea, sir. Even we can try um, off-label in our patients. But um, currently, there is no strong data to back up this. Uh, but theoretically, yes, of course, they, they are going to play a major role among uh, other inflammatory disorders as said by Sivakar uh, Chamsanthi. Certainly, certainly. A molecule to look into. We were thinking RNA is in, but there is one molecule, the GLT yeah. seems to be a thing. But what is your opinion about the epiglyphosine's uh, um, little doubt, uh, debatable performance, sir? What do you think about the epiglyphosine? Yes, sir. But I think it is uh, more of uh, it, it will going to find more usefulness like saraglutasor in NAFLAD and not in other uh, categories, probably. So I think each molecule has its own uh, uh, benefits and uh, drawbacks. I think ER2 is being studied more in NAFLAD now rather than in other uh, uh, cardiac and uh, renal uh, benefits.
that is irtaglifosin irta what you are saying irtaglifosin uh, they are not found uh, benefit so i i really do not know i have not gone into the trial i had only seen the outline heading that irtaglifosin is not uh, uh, improving the uh, i think heart failure hospitalization i really do not know why what do you think uh, murli yourself yeah no you know what do you think you know sir may see one sir, know, Mace, sir sir uh, initially uh, they everybody was claiming all three molecules have similar uh, effect only and the only the population subset which was studied in dapagliflozin was primary preventive uh, population about 60% whereas uh, empa employed 99 percent of population was uh, secondary prevention population so the empa got better results that was the claim of dapagliflozin but when ertoglifosolin they uh, employed 99% of population similar to that of uh, dapa uh, similar to that of empa but ertoglifosolin in spite of having 99% of population for secondary prevention that is established cardiovascular disease with diabetes they are not able to show cardiovascular mortality or morbidity benefit still we don't know why now one thing is for sure it is not Uh, it is a group effect it is a molecular effect the one thing which is being said is the proportion of sglt2 one sglt2 component available in each sglt2 molecule that differs among the molecule to molecule their chemical structure differs so they are saying the strength of that molecule depends upon that composition which gives this additional benefits so uh, nobody is sure why it has happened but one thing is for sure if uh, um, empa shows benefit that doesn't mean unless dapa shows it we not, we cannot believe similarly empa shows benefit we cannot believe that dimoglifosolin also will be, show benefit so every drug molecules needs to be studied for cardiovascular safety mar mace reduction among the secondary population that is what we have arrived now all three molecules can be of the same group but they are not same agreed agreed no. that's what same thing sir i felt uh, it was surprising that vertis trial was not, uh, was not uh, so superiority proving trial compared to other three molecules oh. uh, only time going to prove uh, interestingly as you know you put sglt1 inhibitions they they showed in the bench test that uh, remo has got a better sglt1 inhibition also but we don't have much of a trial on remo what is our take on the today's uh, forum both you and nsk sir about remo we are remo is not studied by any major trials but promoted very well in our part in fact some of our indian some of my sandlians also were involved in the development of this molecule who even proposed that super fuel theory where do you play the remo in this uh, uh, in this band of drugs uh, this is open to both we know the nsk sir sir i will uh, put it like this sorry sir please go ahead sir. no please go ahead no i i will put remo remo is like this sir Remo is a molecule. I will place that is if you want a renal safety, you want to control diabetes, you want as an additional drug, then I will say Remo glifosolin is good or okay. But if you want for a non-diabetic patients for reduction of heart failure, then it is questionable because we don't have any data that Remo glifosolin controls heart failure. Similarly, we don't have any cardiovascular mace reduction data. So if somebody says this patient as as a primary secondary prevention. for mace reduction or uh, a heart failure reduction i am going to use remoglifosolin then absolutely it is no but if you want to use as a diabetic molecule renal safe molecule then of course yes because we it's a korean molecule uh, uh, from south, uh, southeast asia only the molecule origin and they have data on that but they, but they don't even the primary researchers have don't have a data on heart failure or mace reduction so i will place it as a diabetic molecule not as a heart failure or a mace reducing agent molecule unless they have a, a trial data after yeah. the ertoglifosolin's uh, debacle that is what i will position the data you recommend pardon sir so what do you think sir uh, uh, this is what i see i think uh, it is glorifying a molecule in indian setup see if you look at the arbs what has been recommended as uh, we all accept with uh, rcts proven for cardiac failure arb would be valsartan but what is the drug that we are promoting uh, all over india it is tell me sartan for albuminuria reduction and uh, originally it was candisartan and irbisartan candisartan is not available so now we are using uh, olmisartan so but 
what is the molecule if you see sales wise which is stopping whether it is treatment of hypertension associated with renal or without renal problem it is telmisartan similarly now the gliptin when you come to when it comes to gliptin the crts have max rcts have maximum support for the uh, other gliptins not wilda gliptin wilda gliptin has the least support as far as rct is concerned but probably the highest selling molecule is wilda gliptin similarly the teneliglipin and uh, rimoglifosin they are all from uh, the far east and we do not have enough data the only thing that they have generated in glenmark after buying this uh, rimoglifosin is uh, what is uh, 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 what is that called uh, what is that world uh, trial called it's, uh, they have accumulated data in the uh, real world real world trial real world scenario and they say it is a safer drug as we know put it for control of diabetes and uh, renal problem but uh, definitely whether it will reduce the incidence of cardiac failure or maze we do not have data but uh, you see morally i think it will continue to be the uh, maximum seller in this country so what i am trying to suggest is it is people who promote it to that level even though as academicians we talk about uh, so many rcts to back up a molecule at the end of the day uh, it's all lost tell me how many people in this country will be writing well sartan very small very small. but that has the maximum data so that is uh, that is pathetic similarly if you look at the That's data industrial yeah yeah and the one more thing i stand to correct uh, my, myself it is ipraglifosin which is now being tried in uh, naflet not uh, irtuglifosin ipra i p r a ipagrifosin which is being now tried as an sglt2 inhibitor for the treatment of uh, uh, non alcoholic fatty liver disease thanks uh, morally for having given such a wonderful opportunity to be among uh, youngsters like you so that i learn lot of things it's our pleasure to have you always sir you are one of us always sir <laughs> thank you Dr. Bhupati, is there? Are there any more questions? Uh, no, sir. We know you um, can uh, take over the session. You can give the sure. concluding remarks if there are no uh, more questions. Sure. Dr. Bhupati, is there? It's always a pleasure and happy to have one of our favorite teachers, uh, uh, Dr. Siva Karacham, sir, who is, like as sir said, is a part of our team. and he was always interested in post graduate education and we are very happy to have you on today's grand round sir and uh, sparing your time and teaching our post graduates and other uh, colleagues who are interested in this topic is all, um, a great privilege to us and uh, we always wanted you to be with us uh, in uh, other uh, following programs also and always guide us and give us your uh, inputs uh, regarding the newer molecules and uh, medical management therapies i thank uh, murlidharan sir uh, for organizing this uh, wonderful event which is a uh, very useful though i we uh, we extremely um, ask sorry to the participants that we, uh, we could not connect to the our uh, uh, today's uh, guest speaker in view of uh, uh, some emergency down there in us mm, so we say a sincere sorry and we hope to get back him or another good uh, international speaker in our during our next round of uh, talks i assure you that uh, this will not happen again and uh, behalf of department of cardiology and other faculties i thank everyone who has attended today's program thank you one and all thank you sir thank you sir thank, thank you sir thank you we know thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir good night have a great thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you